All right, let's take a look at example three. It says the following data on the average finishing time by age group for female participants in the New York City Marathon is given below. Find and interpret R. Okay, so let's take a look at what we got going on here. I see I've got age, I've got representative age, and I've got average finish time. So age, we've been talking about this since chapter one. Age is definitely a continuous numerical variable. But you can see here, they put it into groups. And when you put it into groups like this, when you want to then enter this data into a list, our lists aren't capable of entering categories, right? They won't accept categories. We can't type into L1 10 to 19, 20 to 29. We're only capable of putting one number in. So a lot of times what we'll do when we have age groups is we just take the halfway point. And yes, 15 isn't exactly halfway between 10 and 19. Technically, it's 14.5. But for all intents and purposes, this is fine. So we will choose 15 to represent this age group. We will choose 25 to represent this age group, so on and so forth. So our two numerical variables in this case, yes, it's age, but we've got representative age. So we're going to pick age as one of our numerical variables, and you can see finish time as the other one, or average finish time, depending on who all was in your age group. All right, so with that, I'm going to flip over to the calculator, and we're going to find R. All right, and then we'll come back and we will interpret R together. Hey, Math 43, so let's take a look at example three and try and find R. So I'm going to do just the calculator part of example three, and then I want to show you a preview of where we're going after we leave example three. So taking a look at the data in example three, again, we've got age here as our independent variable. It's a numerical continuous variable but they've put it into groups, and we're not capable of putting age groups, anything categorical, into L1. We have to put numerical data. So this is just a common workaround that stats folks do. We say, okay, we can't put 10 to 19 in L1. There's not a spot for that, but we can just put a representative age, 15, which is almost the halfway point between 10 and 19. So these are just the representative ages for these age groups. So let's go ahead and load all of our representative ages into L1 and our average finish times into L2. And I've already done that here, right? So you see my, my ages are, or my representative ages are loaded in and my finish times are also loaded in. Now I'm going to check my stat plot. It's probably the same because we're going to be making the same kind of stat plot throughout this entire chapter. And I just want us to take a look at it so we can get some feelings for it. All right, so we'll calculate R in a moment, but I wanna show you where we're headed, okay? If we look at this graph, if we were trying to connect the dots, do you kind of feel the U shape in there, right? Uh, I wanna be specific, this doesn't look like a line, right? I can't really send a line through it, but I see this U shape. So this U, right? Imagine the letter U. If you think back to your math days, I want you to imagine a U in your math classes. We call those parabolas or they were called quadratic functions. So I just want us to hear that idea. I'm gonna put a pin in it. I'm gonna circle back around. But bottom line, the scatter plot looks like a U. All right, so it looks like a parabola. Okay, our directions though say find and interpret R. So let's do that. Whenever you wanna find and interpret R, you wanna go back to your home screen, right? After you've put your data in, after you've looked at your scatter plot, so it's always the same calculator commands, stat calc eight, and then you either tell your calculator two pieces of information or three pieces. We're still on the two. All right, so I'm gonna do stat, I'm gonna go over to calc, and either scroll down to eight or you can just type in the number eight. And I wanna reiterate here, there are two linear regression models inside of your calculator. Option four is what you might use in a math class and you are not in a math class, so we're gonna use option eight. So it's stat calc eight, and then we're gonna tell our calculator to look at L1 and L2, okay? And then, oops, I guess I hit the two uh, one extra time. Let me delete that. There we go. So go ahead and hit enter, and there's our R popping up. So we can see R here at 0.038. 
So it's, it's practically the weakest correlation you can have, because if you remember, your weakest correlation is actually zero. It's right here in the middle. One is strong, negative one is strong. One is strong in the positive direction, negative one is strong in the negative direction, but they're both strong, okay? So we have a pretty weak linear relationship, and that matches our graph. This does not look like a line. It is not linear, all right? It looks like a U. It looks like a parabola. So I want to give you a preview of where we're going to go. So the last calculator command I did was stat calc 8 L1, L2. And I've mentioned that you can do three pieces to this command as opposed to two. So go with me for a moment. Here's what I want to have happen. I would like my calculator to find this line. All right, even though we were just saying it's not linear, I agree, but if it were, I want my calculator to find the line and graph it here. So maybe it would look something like this if I was graphing through it, and I want my calculator to find that. So, oops, excuse me, going back to my home screen. All right, when I hit this, what we, we've been looking at the R solely, but if you look here, there's an A and a B. This A is always the Y-intercept, okay? If you look, Y-intercept A. B is always your slope. So your calculator actually has found the line that passes through that data. And if I would like my calculator to graph it for me, really what I want to have happen is I would like to go this, I hit Y equals here. This is your math graph key. Um, so if you've taken a math class before and used this graphing calculator, your Y equals is where we graph all of our lines and our parabolas and whatever functions we give us or we are given. So what I would like my calculator to do is take, oops, we lost those numbers. Let me get them back up. I would like my calculator to take the line 227.969 plus 0.105 times x, and I would like it to graph. So here's what you're allowed to tack on to this calculator command. If you add another comma, all right, and I'll show you where I'm going to try and get this. I would like to drop this line right here into y1. All right, here's how we do that. It's, it's a fun little calculator command. So we're gonna go vars. You're gonna hit the right arrow key and go to the y vars drop-down menu. All right, you will always be in function mode in this class. We will never leave function mode. If you take a different math class, you might go into parametric and polar mode. We're not, we're gonna be dealing with y variable functions. And then there is your list of all of those y variables, and I just default to y1, okay? So I want you to just see, and we'll do this a couple of times, but I've added a third piece on. So let me hit enter, and this screen looks exactly the same, all right? So there's no difference, but keep in mind these numbers, 227.969 and 0.105. Now look at my y equals. You see that there's a line, there's some information now that's been dropped into y1. And when I hit graph, there's my calculator actually graphing the line of best fit. And that, that's ultimately what we're gonna do in this chapter. We're gonna look at some data, say, okay, what's the best line that fits this? Graph it, okay? And then we'll interpret some things with it. But why I wanna really mention this is if you take a look, this line is awful. It hits, it actually hits no points, right? It, it misses them by quite a lot, right? It, it's just not hitting this. And, and the reason why is this, this data isn't linear. So again, it was U-shaped. I want us to remember it was a U-shaped. So I want to show you where we're going to head in our calculator. So hit stat again, go over to calc. When, it, when you have a U-shape, instead of running a linear regression, you want to run a quadratic regression, okay? So quadratics in math were the U-shapes, they were the parabolas. So in a moment, we're going to run a quadratic regression together. But let me just remind you of a number before we get there. Let me go run linear one more time, okay? And I want you to take a look at this R squared number. So as soon as we leave linear regression and we move into quadratic or cubic or sinusoidal, whatever other regression model we want to use in that stat calc menu, we're only going to look at R squared. So I want you to just look at your R squared right now. It's 0.0014. It's, it's as close to zero as you can get. And it's literally, if you took this R, if you took 0.038 and you squared it, you would get this number. But keep that in mind. And I mentioned that because once you leave linear regression, we compare R squared numbers, where in linear we just compare R's. So R squared, 0.0014, practically the lowest we can get. 
All right, so let's hit stat. We'll go to calc. Instead of eight, let's do option five this time, okay? Now I'm gonna tell my calculator, look between L1 and L2, okay? I'm gonna hit enter, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this again, all right, but I'm gonna add the third piece. So let's hit enter, and do you see that the R squared is now 0.9211, right? It actually jumped from being pretty close to zero to much closer to one. It got a lot stronger, and I want you to see why, okay? So what I want my calculator to do is I want my calculator to graph this parabola for me. You see the parabola ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is this number, b is this number, and c is this number. And what I would like to do so that I can compare it is have my calculator drop it right here into y2. All right, so let's try this. We're going to hit stat. We're going to go to calc, option 5. All right, and the reason I'm doing quadratic is because it looked like OU, and that's a quadratic function in math. Let's tell it to look at L1 and L2. I'm gonna add that third piece on. I'm gonna hit the comma key. All right, now where are your Y variables living? Here's the chain that we will always go down. And we will do this a lot more as we progress through the chapter. I just wanna give you a preview for right now. So we're gonna hit stat. Just kidding. Let me get a quit out of that. You're not gonna hit stat. I forgot what I was doing for a moment. Sorry about that. When you want to get to your Y variables, hit the VARS key. All right, so hit VARS. Now go to Y variables. Okay. You will always be in function mode, so hit enter. And then I don't want to overwrite Y1. I'd actually like to just put it into Y2 so I can compare the two models. So let me hit enter. And when I hit enter again, I'm going to get that same screen I did before, but keep these numbers in mind. 0.179, negative 14, 462. Take a look at what's over in Y2, right? 0 0.179, negative 14, 462. When you hit graph, you're going to see that linear model, which stunk, and then there comes the parabola. Right? Look at that U. It's so much better in terms of hitting those data points. It's a better model, right? And that's what we're trying to make in a stats class. We're trying to take data that we have, put a model, a math function onto it, and predict with it. That's this whole process of regression. So take data you've collected, put a math function on it, and predict into the future with it. Okay, And that's, that's regression in a nutshell. So this is a linear regression, which in this case was awful. right? The R squared was pretty close to zero. This is a quadratic regression, which was pretty good. If we go back here and I run this one more time just to show it to you, my R squared was at 92%. That's, that's pretty high as far as R squareds go. All right, so that's where we're headed. I'm going to flip back to my, my lecture recording and, and we'll interpret R. All right, thanks guys. All right, so now that we've seen how to do that on our calculators, Let's just do a quick review, just so we have it, right? We always start with data entry. So you see my, my variables are in my, my lists, right? And let me just take note. I didn't write it the first time, but I have two numerical variables. Anytime we have two numerical variables, we are dealing with regression. We are in chapter 12. So we've got two numerical variables, all right? And then the next thing I always do is check the stat plot. What does this scatter plot look like? So if I hit zoom nine, there it is. And just to kind of touch base one more time, I mentioned this in the video, uh, in, in the video and example, uh, example one, but it's, it's not bad to revisit it. If you ever wanted to go to the second icon here, this is just your calculator's way of connecting the dots. So it'll actually make that U shape for you if you want. I, I don't typically do that. I just want you to see that's an option. So let me go back to our regular scatter plot. And there we go. Now, now looking at this, this does not look linear to me, right? Because I can see the U. I can see the U from, uh, from our math days. We call U's parabolas, or we would call those quadratic functions. But that's all fine and good. Even if I see the U, that wasn't my direction. It was saying find and interpret R. So here we go. We're going to go stat calc 8, L1, L2. And as long as your diagnostics are on, there is my R value of 0.038. Now, that's half of the question, but it also says to interpret R. And if I scroll this page back down just a bit, all right, 
In order to interpret R, I need three things. I need to determine is it positive or negative, use the word linear, and tell me about the strength. So let me scooch even further back down so we can get that spectrum on our view screen here. All right, so in terms of what I need to write here, my R was positive, right? It was positive 0.038. I'm definitely going to use the word linear. In terms of the strength, 0.038, it's over here on the weak side. So I'm still going to keep this vocab term of weak. My context now has shifted. It's no longer price and quality ratings of bike helmets. Now it's age and average finish times for these marathon runners. So let's go write all of that up. Let's get that taken care of. Okay, so here we go. I would say there is a, and we can go in any order. So I will this time say positive, weak, linear relationship. So I went in a slightly different order, still perfectly acceptable sentence between age and average finish time. for female New York City marathon runners. All right, so this is just saying, we don't think that the relationship between these two is linear. It doesn't look like a line, okay? Now, I, I mentioned this in the video, but I wanna repeat it because I wanna give you a preview of where we're going. All right, so I'm gonna redo all of these calculator functions but instead of just doing stat calc L1, L2, I'm gonna add on that third piece. I alluded to it in a previous example that we would tack on a third piece. And when we started tacking on that third piece, we wouldn't stop. So let me just show you where we're going with this. And just watch what I'm doing. Don't, don't get too caught up in which buttons I pushed because we're gonna push them a lot through this chapter. So just kind of taking the theory of it right now as I roll through the calculator functions. So if I go back here, right, that does not look like a line, but my calculator can figure out the line of best fit. It can figure out a linear model to go through this. And if you want to do that, you still roll with stat calc 8 L1, L2, but here comes the third piece. And again, just watch, take this in. I can drop this into one of my Y variables. All right, and these are my Y variables. These will actually graph lines and parabolas and math functions. Up here were your three stat plots. I'm gonna have my calculator put something into Y1. So if I wanna go into Y1, I add that third piece on and I hit enter. That screen looks the exact same as the one you have when you just did the L1, L2. I want you to take note of these two numbers. You see 227.96 and 0.105. And when you go into my Y equals, there they are, 227.96, 0.105. When I hit graph, there is that line of best fit. And I'm going to say best in quotes. This is the best we can do, but you can see how awful it is, right? It's missing almost every point. This is a terrible line of best fit. And, and that's because this data is not linear. There is no good line that fits through it because it's not a linear relationship. Now, if we think about the U's from back in our math days, those were called parabolas, right? So parabolas were sometimes referred to as quadratic functions. So I want us to take a look at other options that are in here. So let me hit stat calc, and again, we're gonna focus almost solely on stat calc eight, but I wanna mention stat calc five. I want you to see that quadratic option in there. And what I'm gonna ask my calculator to do here is run stat calc five against L1 and L2, okay? And when I do that, you're gonna see that my R squared value gets much larger. So in a moment, I'm gonna do the, I'll hit enter. But once we move beyond linear, which we are just kind of previewing in this example, we, we care about the R squared. So keep this number in mind, 0 0.001. When I run quadratic, watch the R squared. Do we see it went way up to 0.92? That's practically one. That's because this is a much better fitting model. Now, I'll show you what this looks like when I drop it into Y2, okay? So here we go, I want you to remember 92%, right? Huge improvement in my R squared. Remember these numbers, 0 0.179, negative 14, 462. Look what's hanging out in my Y2 now, 
0.179, negative 14, 462. Watch what happens when I hit graph or zoom nine. There was that line of best fit missing almost everything. Here comes my parabola. And you can see it's much closer to all of those data values. This is a better model, right? That's what I mean, better predicting line. I can predict your finish time based on your age with this quadratic model better than the linear model. So this is just showing us the quadratic model is a better fit for these data points than the linear model. So is a better fitting model than the linear model. And you can go as nuts as you ever want with this. I don't know how far each of you have gotten in your math careers, but you have all sorts of other regressions you can try. You can try natural log, you can try exponential, power, logistic, and you can see which one is the best fitting model. We have some metrics for how to determine if it's the best fitting model that we'll talk about later on in this chapter. But I want you to see that we really can extend beyond linear regression. Most things aren't linearly related, so we need to extend beyond it. Okay, all right, thanks guys.